And so by the way, this is, in case you don't know, this is CS, week CS for education, which is computer science for education. And so you're supposed to, in class, hopefully have, it's called an hour of code. We should be teaching as many students as possible how to code. So the question is, when do you start teaching people how to code? When? Well, um, take a look what we've got going here. It's under the little black cloth. Here is a great toy that you don't have to worry about whether your kids are learning anything. They are actually going to learn how to code starting at age five. And uh, let's see if I can get this thing to turn on, oh, slide to unlock. You can see how, what a little genius I am here. So this company is called Play Eye, and I discovered them by accident. I was really excited to discover them. They're located here in Palo Alto, and the two founders are here in the audience. Um, in case I mess up, they're here to rescue me. And I just thought I'd show you what this wonderful toy can do. So just watch. See, I'll just push this button here. There it goes. So there it is. But it does more than that. Let's say you get tired of listening to Twinkle Twinkle. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening over there. Um, if you do get tired of listening to Twinkle Twinkle, you can actually reprogram this yourself. So, so you program Twinkle Twinkle. Can the kids program that? Learn to program. Um, I don't know if they can program. I think it comes pre-programmed with Twinkle Twinkle. So the idea is to teach them how to do. The something. idea is to teach them how to change what song the, this device is making, so that they can do their own thing. So I'm going to give you like a little demo, okay, here, on how to do this. And here's just one. Uh oh. Let's see if it behaves itself. So this, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm just going to push on one of these little A things, and then I'm going to push on this arrow thing, and push on another A thing, and it, what it does is it's going to repeat some of the sounds, and you can see up here, it's going to play the scale, or hopefully will play the scale here. Notice. Does this, okay? So then it says, good job, and so I can go and do something else. So here's another one. I can do these two or those, and then I'll do, um, I think, two, one of these. Hopefully I've done it correctly. And here we go, and let's see. It's gonna skip notes this time. Oh, do it twice. So the idea, so kids, of course, um, they can play all sorts of things. They can do anything they want here. Um, so let's say you want to make a mistake, or you don't want to make a mistake, but you just let kids do something that they just normally do, which is kind of crazy. And let's see what it does. Oh my god, it's still doing it. <laughs> uh, well, OK. Well, no, but it says, see here, it says I did not do it correctly. I don't know if you can see that somehow or other. This machine is not working. Have I done? <laughs> <laughs> ah, there we go. So now, see? And it says, nope, did it wrong, or whatever, in another way. But the idea is to think, to have kids learn how this type of a tablet can control a device like this. And so my question to the founders was, well, <clears throat> I can just see kids doing this over and over and over and over and over again, and you know, it would drive the parents a little nutty. So apparently, these devices are going to have a personality. <clears throat> and the personalities can be one of them would be like, enough already. You know, this, you've done this too much. You can now switch to something else. So there'll be a couple or three personalities that you can get in your device. And notice that it has an eye. Um, I don't know if you can see it from there. But um, anyway, the eye is supposed to make it look like 
you know, you actually see, it has a personality, it looks more like personality than <coughs> something, than uh, just a regular toy. So this is one way to get kids doing something that is meaningful, educational, and hopefully getting them involved in coding really early. And so that's why I was very excited to find it. You know, you're a journalism professor. Yes. A teacher. Yes. Um, do, you, do you think that the, all of us, have, this has been pushed for Hour of Code. It's a very laudable effort that they're doing. But is, is that at the expense of anything else? I mean, you've been an educator for a long time. Um, basic, or do you think that it's just inevitable that everybody, every journalist, for example, you're building a big facility at, at Pali. Um, how do you think about that? having done it for so long. Um, so I, I do think that, they, that every kid should be taking some coding, and it should be part of some program. Programs specifically that would work would be part of, for example, a math class would be able to do some. We're not talking about a lot of coding. It's just a way of thinking. And so this newspaper program, the Campanile that I run, the kids use more technology in that class than they do in any other class in the school because everything is done on computer, um, the whole thing is sent over the internet. Um, the websites, we build our own websites. We broadcast every day. We use technology to do the broadcasting. So the kids use um, technology, they apply it. In other words, they have to find out why it's important and then apply it at the same time. Can I answer your question too, because I've been involved in the Hour of Code. I mean, I think it's, it's really essential for us going forward that we do teach coding in schools and Absolutely. that we pretty much have everybody learning to code. And it is a problem right now that it's seen as an optional skill. And um, if you think about the world and you think about how it's going to change over the next, you know, if you have an elementary school kid, how's it going to change over the next 15 years? Where are all the jobs going to be? We do so many things to make our kids successful. Why not give them an education about how to really be successful in the digital world? And that would be having basic coding experience. And the other thing that I actually learned in this hour of code, which I had never really thought about before that I think is really important, is making it a mandatory required class, which by the way, we all learn like physics and chemistry and biology and math and spelling, um, which you, know, you could argue don't like, you know, potentially computer science is more important than any of those other things. Um, um, I mean, they're all important, but it, it's certainly an important skill going forward. And the thing I realized with it, with this hour of code, is it actually makes it so that all the people who have not participated, women, um, brings diversity. Um, if everybody is getting that training, then suddenly everybody has that exposure. Everyone is teaching for both, for all genders. Um, you don't have these expectations that it's just it's a more male type of field because by definition, everybody is taking this class. Everybody is exposed to it. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, yeah. I think that if you think back to the Middle Ages when people didn't know how to read, you had your monk or your priest who would read for you. And, you know, that was, you weren't, education, you didn't have to be educated. No, if you were educated, it didn't mean you had to have to read. Then we made reading a mandatory su mm -hmm. subject. And now, you're, if you don't know how to read, you're not educated. I would argue that if you don't know how to code, understand code, it'd be like the same thing as yeah. not knowing how to read back in the Middle Ages. I'll, so I'll, tell, I'll, I tell totally you, I'll tell you a true story. 15 or 20 years ago, I was stunned when uh, my oldest son came home from high school and said, um, they've gotten rid of wood shop, which used to be what every right. boy at least used to have to take, yes. <coughs> and they they are going to teach us HTML this semester, and we're going to have to make a web page. This is a long time ago. Wow. This is way before this wave recently. And I said, you know there are these things like Dreamweaver or whatever they are were at the time where you can just make the, you know, you don't actually have to know the underlying HTML code. He said, oh, no, they won't let us use that. We have to actually hand code. Yep. It was a simple website. It was, there were no unsimple websites in those days, but they actually, and they were graded on it, and, and it was mandatory, and that was part of graduating. At so, his particular high school in, not in California, but in Maryland, uh, quite, a, quite a while ago. So I, I do a work with Dean Kamen and the FIRST Robotics, and if any of you have kids, I highly recommend you look at FIRST Robotics, because it takes kids, and high school kids, and teaches them how to think differently and go to work on a project and educationally, and, I, and I'm, I'm so delighted you showed little bits because I'm a huge fan of little bits. I mean, I, 
I've got them all over the place. I'm glad I didn't bring them because you had them, but uh, I think that's absolutely fabulous. I also have the Raspberry Pi, which is just as interesting and for a little bit older, but anyway. So um, one of the things I'm trying to promote actually is um, journalism in schools all over the country, actually all over the world, because I think the skills a journalist has are skills that 21st century students need. And those are skills on first, how to search, how to understand what you get as a result of a search, and how to figure out what's most important, and then also how to write. And we all need to know how to write for the web, and so that's another thing that I've been pushing in addition to the CS computer science. So in this building that Palo Alto is opening, I don't know if you know that in the spring of this coming year, they're opening a 27,000 square foot media center in Palo Alto. It's the first of its kind in the country for a high school, and um, we're pretty excited about it. And uh, so part of that program includes all these journalism programs, all these students. We have about 600 kids taking journalism. And it will also include computer science. So that's part of the whole thing so that you can, the kids that are doing CS will also be part of the whole program. So um, that's, a, I think it's a very important thing. So I hope that um, all, everybody is going to be able to have pro toys like that for their kids as opposed to these things that I've seen it, you know, I don't want to say where, but they repeatedly do the same thing all over and over again and that people really don't learn much of anything and kids really don't learn anything. So thank you very much and um, happy to be here.